Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, November 22, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, as you can see, the market is, after eating time off the clock, beginning to break to the upside. Now, there was an outside chance that we would take some kind of a dip lower that would have been a possible buying opportunity. That didn't happen. The holiday-type markets are kicking in. What do I mean by that? Anytime you have one of these long holiday weekends, especially the more important the holiday is, the more tendency the market has to float around, float in the upward or northern direction. It's a great excuse to float them up into the weekend. Now, if that's going to be the case, let's discuss some important areas once again, and not just for the next couple of days, but let's discuss into next week. If the market begins another phase of melt-up, where's she going? What's the most logical place? Where's the magnetic thing drawing the market into? And what's up there to act as quote-unquote, overhead resistance, and a potential trade on the other side of the tape. First, let's start with the regular way head and shoulders pattern that never did complete, yet they're running back up north in the vicinity, getting to the vicinity. It's an eyeball's view of the neckline. A, they can backtest the underside of the neckline and fail, or Number two, they can get above the neckline, and if they start closing even one day, two days above the neckline, it totally negates the head and shoulders pattern. Doesn't mean they can't come down. It's just that pattern would be wiped off the board. As you can see, that's quite a bit above the 200-period moving average. But let me mind you something. So they came close to the 200-period. They made an attempt. Not really that close, but they made an attempt, at least on the daily chart, it looks like they did, and then they had a pullback. So all of a sudden, that 200-period moving average isn't necessarily the same type of resistance had it been hit on the first run-up before the pullback. So okay, fair enough. It's still there, we have to note it. It's at a semi-fat type of round number, 405, give or take, but... And put this on a sticky note, 405, give or take, is in the middle of no man's land. Not to say they can't stop there, but if they've made it all this way, doesn't it make sense that it at least make a better attempt to fill the gap left open over here on the 12th of September? They don't have to. They can certainly spike above the big breakdown candle high and then reverse back down, but we're going with the bull case for the time being. We're all aware that that could happen, but we're talking about how high can the market go and what's up there. So let's just say for argument's sake, they don't stop at 405 in the middle of no man's land, but yet continue up to fill the gap left open on the 12th of September. Well, whether that's going to be 408 and change, 409, 410, 411, something in that neighborhood is fine. They don't have to stop on a dime. They could spike things through. They do that often. Now, that 409, 410 area, whatever it's going to be, doesn't necessarily get us to the underside of the neckline. And once again, more awareness. They don't have to backtest it. However, these things, when price gets close, they tend to have what we'll call magnetic tendencies. All of a sudden, we're getting closer when we move the concept up to the neighborhood of around 415. We start to get to the underside of the head and shoulders neckline. So herein lies the potential for a melt-up operation. Why is that? We talked about a normal cycle type of thing going on that comes in around the end of the month, maybe into the first few days of December. Well, markets have a tendency, if they're going to follow a cycle, 
they will trade up into or down into an important time frame. Well, in this case, if, and it's a big if, if they choose to trade up and they have a squeeze operation, a melt-up operation into this vicinity, that's going to be a very, very important place for price to find itself near and around the end of the month, beginning of December. Put that on a sticky note. Here's an example from an hourly chart perspective about that holiday type market, light volume, lack of participation that we discussed yesterday. And you can see on the hourly chart, there were no down candles. The market was in a creeping, grinding, melt-up situation all day long. Now let's look at the weekly chart of the SPY, and I want to point something else out. We're back to the discussion of where's the market going, what's drawing it up there, and what's going to provide overhead resistance if it gets up there. And here's an idea. I've got the Fibonacci retracement from the high that was made in January down to the low that was made in mid-October. So now they're retracing a portion of that move. Look where the 50% retracement puts price. It puts price at 414. We just talked about 415. And oh, by the way, you have a downsloping crossed over 50 period moving average, 100 period moving average, right in the same vicinity. 50% retracement couple of weekly moving averages, neckline, back test of a head and shoulders neckline, and you go back to the daily chart and look where that neckline crosses on the same Fibonacci retracement tool. Pretty incredible. I would earmark this video and come back to it if price begins to melt up higher, just so you remember what was discussed. And since we're the umpire calling balls and strikes, by the way, there's your guideline to keep the uptrend intact. Now, there are numbers ahead of that trend line that will crack the market and send it down to the trend line, but the trend line is really the last line of defense for the current move in the upward and slash northern direction. All right, so I gave you a bunch of stuff to think about. Now let's check out inside the numbers and let's see if traders from inside the numbers and or the live room were able to benefit from A, the commentary, and B, stocks on the move. It was turnaround Tuesday. We're expecting the volume and participation to be similar to yesterday, maybe even slightly less. The volume tends to get less and less as the week goes on. Less participation equals less volume. However, they can still move the tape when nobody's looking. Hence, they did that today. Remember, this is at zero dark 30. Getting into the numbers for today, we've got 393.75 as an early important spot, maybe a pivot. That's if they were falling a little bit. The numbers get refined as we get closer to the opening bell. We don't have to talk about the bear case, so let's flip over to the bull case. You can read it on your own if you like. 395 is overhead resistance and the gateway to 396 and more. The more begins to climb one of our big breakdown candles where the high is 397.81. Above opens the door for 398.50. At the time at zero dark 30, I'm not thinking about 400 where they ultimately got to for today. But if you've been here in the past, you know when we were in the past, recent past, Talking about 398.50, if they got above, where would they go? 400. Didn't say it today, but if you were here in the past, like the last week or so, then you remembered that, hopefully. Now we fast forward to about 8.25 in the morning. Well, they're back to 396. They missed it yesterday. It was unfinished business and is now our bull pivot. Now, this is important, and if you're an intraday trader, please pay attention to this. We talk about the morning trade all the time. If we have a pivot, if I can identify a pivot and they trade either in the southern or northern direction away from the pivot, at least one time, they're going to come back to visit the pivot, run a test, make sure it is the pivot, or at minimum, make sure either the bulls or the bears in control, whatever side of the market slash pivot you want to be on, 
and it usually provides a trade either to the pivot or from the pivot away from the pivot. You'll see that in a few moments. Stay tuned. If they get below the pivot, it opens the door for a test of 395 and potentially yesterday's close, 394.60. So keep in mind, 395, 825 in the morning, 396 is our pivot. We think better in pictures, right of the vertical is today's activity. 395 is the lower horizontal line, and as you can see, low of day was 395.15, 396 was our pivot. They opened the day at 396.63. They came down to test the pivot, they went down to 395 or close to it, and they bounced away. Once they got over 396, and you'll see this in the notes, once they get over it, start closing candles over it, it's game on. Let's scroll up, see what else we have. 922, 396 is our short-term pivot and our bull pivot. Staying above keeps the door open for a run up to 397 and 397.85. It's a zone. Above the next spot is 398.50, which is unfinished business. Know thy numbers. 398.50. They get there. They go back and forth. They eat some time off the clock. Little bit of a pullback. Once they start getting over it, it's at the end of the day. They're going to jam them up into the close in what we call an EOD or end of day jam session. Big fat round numbers are magnetic. 400 is a big fat one. It's magnetic. It pulled price in. They spiked it and they closed pretty much right on it. This is everything before the opening bell even rings. So you'll see here, 935, 396.65 is short-term resistance. The number's getting narrowed down. Keep that number in mind. Watch this in a few moments. 396 is our pivot. Below opens the door for 395. Above keeps the door open for the bulls to rally the tape. They were slightly below. So what we're saying here is recapturing 396 is the bull case for a test of the highs or higher. Moving along, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. If they can stay above 396, they'll find their way to spike above 397, 10 o'clock. And there you have it. You can see here, a few minutes later, they run a spike of 397 and they have a pullback. The pullback is a bullish type of formation pullback. Look at the last, even on this five minute chart, the last big break up candle in the sequence, what did they do? They ran a test down near the bottom, it held and they went higher yet again, using the same number as support once they get above. Funny how that works. And oh, by the way, they did the whole pullback thing even on a five minute chart on time. What does that mean? Time is more important than price. That's what's discussed, taught, absorbed and put to use in the Lazy E-mini Trader course. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. It's all in here, door open for 398.50. They did it later on in the day. Each and every day you have as good of a schematic as you're gonna find, including the important numbers along the way, both in the northern and southern direction, each and every day. Stocks on the move. We had a little bit of a list today, but only one hit its objective. That's okay. We take what Mrs. Market provides. We're going to take a look at the chart of Blackstone, BX. There it is. Blackstone getting its proverbial haircut at the opening bell. Finds a bottom where? 85.45. Check out this rip all the way up to 88.44, I believe that number is. And guess what? In today's math, that equals $3 in a matter of minutes. How you doing? Regardless of how much you got out of the trade, either way, the numbers work. What's going on over in Camp IWM? So this is interesting. Not to say it won't follow the S&P if the S&P melts up, but as you can see, it's lagging. So what does that tell you? The lagging indicator, my favorite market leading indicator, is lagging the broader market. Money is not leading its way into the small cap index. It's a lagging index at present. Whether it catches up or not remains a bit of a mystery, but this is somewhat of a tell. Think in terms of 
The market melts up for another week or two. We're going to get into a period of time where we may be expecting a turn. Is this foreshadowing something to come? Is it telling us in advance acting as a canary in the coal mine? The canary in the coal mine doesn't necessarily knock on the door a day early, two days early. You have to watch it. You have to see the makeup. You have to see the pattern on the chart. You have to see what's going on in terms of how much is it lagging? Are the pictures actually that different? And they are developing in a different way when you compare the SPY chart that's approaching the highs up here and the IWM that's still down here, not even above this 200 period moving average. It's interesting information. It's a puzzle piece. It's stick note worthy. It's on the table. What's going on down at the transportation department? Well, we have a similar story going on. Another lagging index, my second favorite market leading index, my absolute favorite canary in the coal mine. So we say lagging because it was up about one quarter of 1% against the S&P that was up almost one and a third percent. These two, both the IWM and the transports are on sticky notes, they're puzzle pieces, they're on the table, they're lagging the broader market. This is not to be discounted information. What about the Q people? What's going on over there? Also somewhat lagging the broader S&P market, S&P 500. Let's turn the tables a little bit and look at something we never look at. And I never look at this. I look at it independently. I don't talk about it in the videos because it's a market of 30 stocks. So we're going to look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But there's a method to the madness, and I want you to understand why we're looking at it. We'll get back to the cues in a minute. I thought this was a good place to look at it. We have lagging index in the cues, the IWM, the transports against the S&P, but we look at the Dow and it's leading. So how do we read that in history? How do we typically read that? Meaning, why does that typically run ahead of those indices? And when do they typically, or the Dow typically, run ahead of those indices. Well, let's think for a moment. Let's just do some investigative work. What's inside of the Dow? Well, just to give you an example of the top 10, we have United Healthcare, Goldman Sachs, Home Depot, Microsoft, Salesforce.com, McDonald's, Honeywell, Visa, Amgen, and Boeing Airlines. What do those companies all have in common? They're big, stodgy, non-growth. I mean, they do grow, but they're more stabilized type companies. It's not where money goes for rapid growth, quick growth, quick trades. It's where money goes to kind of be safe. When the money going into the safe stuff is outpacing the money going into the growth stuff and everything else, my antenna goes up because that's kind of like the transports lagging. It's somewhat of a canary in the coal mine doesn't tell you anything for tomorrow, but it tells you something is developing underneath the hood that you can't necessarily see. Now we go back to the Q chart, compare that, and look at this. You can see where, sure, it's a bullish formation, there's likely more upside coming, but look at the difference in the Dow and the Qs. What's this telling you? This is a bounce in a downtrend. If the financials aren't falling apart, then nothing else is going to fall apart in terms of the broader market. The financials are melting up. They're kind of a tweener in between the stuff that's lagging and the stuff that's leading. So it's basically on par, big sector in terms of the overall S&P 500, big makeup of the S&P. The financials are doing just fine. The tape is still bullish. Smash mouth, same chart as we've seen over and over and over again. If everything's going to melt up, everything will melt up together. It's all the same market. Still a bounce and a downtrend, net, net, net. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.